Hi, welcome to FinTech 22. I'm joined here by Alan from Zucoin. Alan, really excited to have you here today. You're our naming sponsor and you've got a really interesting background and in technology. Can you walk us through how you founded um, Zucoin and perhaps your entrepreneurial um, adventure to, here, to where you are now? Uh, thank you, Lucy, and a pleasure to be here today. Um, it's been a long journey. My uh, background goes through accounting, uh, through to corporate uh, advisory services and mergers and acquisitions that we've done. And certainly trying to build out platforms has been a passion of mine. Um, very excited when Bitcoin came along in 2009, which seemed to be a global solution for the way in which transactions of value can be conducted and having built a payment system and um, bought a company called Splitlock, which is a, an innovation itself. It um, doesn't use uh, the normal uh, things that we see, Lucy, in terms of the way we protect data. It actually fragments data so that you, uh, you have packets and you pull it together. So you can't actually hack it. And it was from that concept that a young fellow in Albury called Robert Novak, who's our CTO, realized that he could fragment the data on blockchain and create, as a result of those fragments, a whole new change in the thinking of blockchain into what we call split chain. So split chain um, is the complete reverse of what the norm is with our current blockchain thinking. The nodes or the miners, we don't have miners, uh, only store the last two fragments of data, that's the last two transactions, and the rest of the data re remains in the hands of the peers. So it's the flip side of what we see today, which means the chain never grows in a sense, there's always a flow rate of one to one. Uh, and as a result of that, you get far more efficiencies. You don't have all the environmental issues with the miners and the energy consumption, um, the nodes just bubble along. Yeah. And um, it, the peers conduct the validation and the entire process amongst themselves, peer to peer. Wow, that sounds truly decentralized then. It, look, it is, and, and uh, he's wanted to explore even, you know, a greater perspective to that decentralization yeah. by the actual wallet itself, for example, with, that are housing the coins. Right. That's built on what's called a progressive web app. Uh, so it's not in the iStore and it's not subject to any uh, third party influences. Mm -hmm. um, the peers actually retain full control of that wallet and the coins, uh, which, which le lends itself to the nodes being decentralized, the wallets decentralized, and of course, the peers have got what well, we've got the world's first ever two-factor authentication. A peer, a sender and receiver will always at all times be able to transact in a time lock. So you can't actually lose your coins like current thinking with Bit, uh, you know, Bitcoin, for example, on sending it to the wrong address. Yeah, yeah. So that's quite unique. Wow, there's so many innovations here, it's incredible. Yeah, it's, um, it's mainly designed for my, I wanted to have mass adoption. And the hard friction point is people getting used to the concept of crypto, getting used to um, wallets. It's all pretty scary for the, for the mass market. You can literally download this wallet in two clicks. You get instant satisfaction or gratification, you've got a wallet. And you can commence immediately knowing the transfer of coins between peers where you don't have a, a drain on miners and the whole infrastructure. Yeah. And the node services uh, as a reference point that the truth can be found, so you can't double spend and you can't you know, dummy the system for the transfer of that value. And there's no fees and charges, there's no, you've got basically infinite fractions. Uh, yeah, it's, it's pretty exciting space we're in. Yeah, I'll say. And how do you, how do you get the mass adoption? Because obviously this, this, this space is so hard to communicate in. Yours, yours is a very different concept. Um, how do you gain that trust uh, that this, and this is a much easier way to, to, to attain crypto now? Yeah, look, that took a lot of work to uh, adopt it from a consumer perspective, because you want, in any big system, you want an end user case. You know, you want to be able to, consumers to work with merchants, so you've got to dumb it down for that as well. Yeah. You want the exchange integration, so there's no coins on the exchange at all either. Yeah. It's always residing with the peer. And um, the work we did was that literally we could, you know, we were also involved with augmented reality. It's a bit like Pokemon Go on steroids. Oh, wow. So we can, on a geo mapping sense, drop QR codes with spinning coins anywhere on the planet 24 seven. Really? So people can go hunting and collecting the coins. Yes. There may be rewards in that, yes. but when they press the button of the coin, it gives them within two clicks an instant wallet. So our distribution base 
is literally about 60 odd million potential uh, wallet users around the world. And we hope for a, a, at least a 30% take up rate of that. Yeah. And as a result of that, that's where you get the mass traction on wallets. Once you get a wallet, we know that people want to get more coins yeah. and there's a viral inside the wallet. They can then send the wallet to their family and friends as well. It's, mm -hmm. it's very uh, interactive. Yeah. So um, the wallet uh, is very key to uh, thinking outside the norm of getting people involved with crypto. Yeah, and I think the gamification, um, that sounds like, you know, a, another way of doing oh, that too. Look, it's fantastic. Look, yeah. we can, we've got merchants that get a win-win as well. So, you know, the owner of this plant, we can put into a three-dimensional form oh, wow. and that could be produced by a, 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 a plant nursery yeah. and attached to that could be the benefit of the wallet with a coin in it. So they actually see that spinning anywhere that could be set up around the room yeah. or outside. And the younger generation just love that gamification. Yeah. And the merchant gets the benefit of products. We get the benefit of the distribution. Amazing. And what's the future of ZooCoins um, well, next, as next steps? Yeah, we've, we've got uh, quarter of one of 2023 is about what we call the ZooBot, which is the bridge that allows the unique connection of our uh, protocol, the layer one, to exchanges, to merchants. And post that, or during that period, our target is to get 100 million wallets distributed globally. Um, we noticed that Dogecoin got 4.4 million wallets out in nine years. So we, we think we can achieve that in yeah. record time. Um, again, because we don't have that friction. Yeah. And you want to make it interactive for people to be comfortable. And I, I use the analogy, Lucy, of, um, you know, if you get $100 in your wallet in your pocket, that's a similar analogy that you've got. You don't want anyone touching your wallet. It's yours for your possession. It's self-governing and crypto should be exactly the same. It yeah. should be in your possession, yeah. not reliant on other wallets or downloads and yeah. things um, and, and take ownership. Yeah, amazing. Well, so. taking ownership with ZooCoin. Thank you so much, Alan, for coming to Fintech 2022. Thanks, Lucy. Pleasure. Thank you. Pleasure to meet you.